Welcome back to the Rotator Cuff Expert. Um, today, we're going to talk about post-op pain, how to control post-op pain after you have your shoulder surgery. Um, the key here is that the first few hours afterwards, you'll be pretty comfortable because of the anesthesia they give you. However, in the coming 24 to 48 hours, that's when the pain is going to set in. So we'll, have, we'll talk about today a few things that will make it easier to recover from shoulder surgery. Uh, if you um, have any questions, comments, leave them on the bottom of our uh, YouTube, <coughs> excuse me, our, of our YouTube, uh, and we'll try to get back to the questions, comments as soon as we can. Okay, so first of all, pain after shoulder surgery. Why do you have pain? Well, we go in there, depending on what we do, we'll create uh, swelling, bleeding, uh, trauma to the bone, trauma to the rotator cuff. Uh, we oftentimes, almost in my practice, almost every time we'll do something called a decompression, which is to take a little bit of bone off right above where the rotator cuff is. In taking that bone off, that bony work hurts. And so the key thing, probably the number, number one, number two, number three, but the number one important part is ice. Now ice is important in recovery. Uh, ice specifically for the first 48 hours to decrease the inflammation. Uh, after 48 hours, it probably is not quite as important and it's more for comfort. But in the first 24 hours, 48 hours, we put ice on it. Now, ice can be in many different ways. It doesn't really matter. If you look at the studies as far as if you use a craft cuff with compression, which is a specific kind of uh, bandage you put on that gives compression and gives ice, uh, ice water circulating through, or ice bags or ice peas or whatever, it doesn't really matter. Just making sure that you have ice on it for the first 48 hours as much as possible. We can do that because most of the time uh, we'll have a dressing, a compression or the dressing over the shoulder that we work on and that dressing doesn't allow the ice to get in quite efficiently. So when people talk about 20 minutes on, 20 minutes off or 30 minutes on, 30 minutes off, it doesn't really apply, uh, at least in my opinion, it doesn't really apply for right after shoulder surgery because of the big dressing on. So it's hard to get it in. So I would say as much as you can for the first two days, ice, ice, ice. As we says, vanilla ice would say ice, ice, baby. So ice is super important. Again, it doesn't really matter how it gets ice, just make sure you're ice. Okay, so that's number one, and that's really important. That will help decrease the pain and decrease the swelling, decrease the inflammation uh, for the first 24 to 48 hours. Um, the other thing is, which I think is crucially important, and there's lots of uh, questions about a nerve block or a blocker or a nerve. Uh, what happens is if we, before surgery, just before you go to sleep for surgery, uh, the anesthesiologist, not the orthopedic surgeon, but the anesthesiologist will put a block here and that block will numb your arm up for about 18 hours or so if it's working well. It may work a little bit longer, it may work shorter. Occasionally the block doesn't work, but a block is really helpful, especially for the first night. That first night is pretty significant pain in the evening and throughout the morning, the early morning, and so we really want to control that pain and a good way to control that pain is a nerve block. Now, yes, there are some pluses and minuses of the nerve block. There are some risks like any other injection anywhere. And so make sure you talk with your, your, your shoulder surgeon uh, to, to determine what his um, comfort level is, what, it, what he would like to do. Also talk with the anesthesiologist that's gonna put it in. A nurse anesthetist or an anesthesiologist can put it in. So talk with them and make sure you feel comfortable with them and what their risks and benefits are before you do the nerve block. But in my opinion, a nerve block is really important. If I ever have shoulder surgery, I'm gonna take the nerve block. I, it is worth the first 24 hours or 48 hours to have that pain relief. One thing is people sometimes, occasionally, some of my patients, it really drives them crazy because it's numb, they can't feel it. Um, again, 98% of the time people like the nerve block. A few people feel almost claustrophobic with the nerve block, so kind of think through that as well. But in general, nerve block, good thing. Pain medicine, even though you're having a nerve block, hopefully, you'll need some pain medicine. Pain medicine can be in several forms. Uh, for my practice, we, I usually use three different kinds of pain medicine. I use a narcotic, I use a nerve pain medicine called gabapentin, and I will use an anti-inflammatory, depending on what one. So for me at this date today, I would use hydrocodone I would, with Tylenol. I would use uh, gabapentin, which is the nerve specific nerve kind of pain, and I would use a anti-inflammatory Celebrex specifically, but it can be any anti-inflammatory. I check Celebrex only because Celebrex usually d doesn't irritate the stomach quite as much. For the first few days, 24 hours, 48 hours, that medicine is, is pretty constant, pretty consistent. After that, we wean it off or we kind of get rid of it. Um, there are some, there's some controversy in anti-inflammatories and shoulder rotator cuff healing. 
Uh, in my opinion, if you use it for two days and then you get rid of it, it's probably not important, um, but talk with your surgeon about that. So uh, narcotic hydrocodone, yeah, essentially that's every four hours, every six hours or so. Um, and you take that starting in the evening of surgery, in my opinion, you take that because you're not having any pain, but you're gonna have pain with the nerve block wears off. So you wanna take it before you need it. And then as, you, as the um, nerve block wears off the next day, then you kind of know where you're at. Same thing with the nerve modulator gabapentin. Uh, I would take, I give that to people for um, the first two days or so to, to hit the pain in a different, different way. It helps minimize the risk or minimize the number of narcotic medicines you, really want, you have to take. Obviously that's important uh, in the, the big uh, uproar about narcotics and the risk of narcotics. Uh, gabapentin can help minimize the risk of taking narcotics after the first 24 hours or so. Uh, and lastly, anti-inflammatories. Again, it's an anti-inflammatory. In addition to the ice, the anti-inflammatory will help decrease the inflammation in the shoulder that can be beneficial. So those three things I think are crucial. Talk with your shoulder surgeon, see what they think and their ideas, uh, and perhaps you bring something up new to them they haven't thought about. Um, but we've been doing this multimodal nerve or multimodal pain medicine uh, uh, for uh, um, for a while in other aspects of orthopedic surgeons or surgery, I think this is a good adjunct to our shoulder surgery. Okay, so that's ice, nerve block, pain medicine, and then move. Now move is crucial, but also important. And so you have to talk to your shoulder surgeon about what they want you to do and how much you can move. Certainly your wrist, elbow, fingers can move because you're not having any surgery on that if you have shoulder surgery. Probably your elbow can move, at least move active and passively, which means not with any weight necessarily, but move it. Uh, and usually what happens, we'll do some pendulums. Pendulums are little, you know, if you've ever seen a pendulum that circles around like this, that's what you do with your shoulder. You do circles around like this. And in the first 24 hours, 48 hours, actually usually till you see the surgeon back, the pendulums are helpful too. Now, if you have a massive rotator cuff tear and a huge repair, they may say, you know what, we're just gonna lock you into the shoulder immobilizer. That will be unusual and rare. <clears throat> but again, talk with your shoulder surgeon because you need to know that if you get really stiff after surgery, it's gonna be a really hard recovery. If you're stiff before surgery, it's gonna be a harder recovery. So what we wanna do is minimize the stiffness after surgery, and one way to do that is get your wrist, hand, elbow, and to some degree your shoulder moving early. Now there are some situations when we do a shoulder surgeon surgery that we actually don't have any restrictions on range of motion. That would be if we didn't fix the rotator cuff. We just did a what we say a clean up, go in there, clean it up, uh, make more space with the rotator cuff, that kind of stuff, then you wouldn't have any restrictions. And that actually helps us recover faster because we can move faster without worrying about disrupting that repair. Uh, and then, so moving is important. And I talk with your doctor about whether you need a mobilizer or a sling or nothing. Usually will be something because of the nerve block, because the first 24 hours after the nerve block, if you can't feel your shoulder, we'd want that support of that, that, uh, that um, device, that mobilizer sling device. Sleep position. So typically what I would say to my patients, you can get in any position you want to, whatever's comfortable for you. If you're in the immobilizer, you can get in any position you want to. However, the most comfortable position almost, almost always is a semi-reclined position. So how do you get into a semi-reclined position? Well, a recliner you can, not everybody has a recliner. I would not go out and buy a recliner if you don't have one for this shoulder surgery. Um, so you can, you can actually prop yourself up with pillows. You can get on the couch and put pillow behind you. You can do couch or you can put pillows in your bed, and last you can use a wedge. Now there's many commercial wedges out there that, that you sit on or that you lie down on, keeps your head up. People sometimes people use it for snoring or they use it for multiple other things, but that wedge can be helpful. Uh, it's sort of comfortable. Probably in the next few videos, we're gonna do a demonstration and do a comparison of wedges uh, to, to determine which one is, seems to work better, what angle, how much, how many inches, that kind of stuff. Um, but the wedges can be important, and those are much, obviously, much cheaper uh, than than a recliner. Um, but they're not as cheap as your own pillows at home. So you have to kind of weigh that out. But that may be a benefit uh, to to sleeping in that wedge position, and actually not just sleeping, but even after surgery, you may be more comfortable just sitting down in the first few days with a little wedge behind you. So anyway, wedges can be helpful, but in general, you want to you want to get in a position that is comfortable so you can sleep. Uh, and a, a wedge or pillows will be helpful for that. Another thing is it's super important 
uh, when we're taking in narcotics, we're taking pain medicine, we're going to take those pretty consistently for a while after surgery. So that while after surgery, we also need to make sure we're doing enough liquids, we're making sure we're getting enough fiber, enough uh, uh, blue or green leaf vegetables, uh, enough uh, other kind of fibers to minimize the risk of constipation. There's nothing worse, well, there might be something worse, but not many things worse than having a really painful shoulder and not being able to go to the bathroom. That's a bad combination, and occasionally in the more elderly patients, we have that problem, and they end up having to go to the ER to take care of that. So anyway, really, really try to make sure you're drinking liquids, 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 because you're not gonna be moving a lot. Make sure if you have trouble uh, with constipation anyway, um, make sure you're taking some fiber. Fiber can be in multiple sources, right? Fiber from food. We do fiber from um, <clears throat> supplements. Citrusel, I think citrusel is a great supplement. It doesn't give you gas, but it's a good fiber supplement, so make sure that. Colace, which is another kind of stool softener, which is important. All those can be uh, over the counter. And then if you were having trouble, if you normally go every day and you didn't go for a day or you didn't go for two days, you need to let the doctor know right away. Don't wait any longer than two days. I prefer if you, if you go every day and you didn't go that one day, then maybe that's okay. But you really need to be thinking about, okay, am I doing everything I can to minimize the risk of constipation? There are other over-the-counter um, medicines that can be helpful in... Um, in constipation, uh, if, if once you are constipated, obviously all those fiber stuff are to, to try to protect you from getting constipated. But once you're constipated, there are other medicines you can try. Talk with your surgeon. Talk to, they will let you know what's available in your area to take if you are, in fact, con, in fact constipated. Um, also, caveat fiber and that kind of stuff. Make sure it's okay. I don't know your situation, so make sure it's safe for you to take fiber. If you've had some sort of GI procedure, um, then maybe they would not you to take fiber. But anyway, talk with your doctor uh, and determine what's going to be the safest thing to do to minimize that risk of constipation. Last thing, protect your shoulder. So after a first few days after surgery, you'll be okay. You'll be getting around okay. And you're going to be an immobilizer. Most times surgeons say, hey, if you're going to go out, be an immobilizer so people can see it. And that's a great idea. So if you're going to be out and about, make sure you have your sling on. Even if you don't really need your sling, make sure you have your sling on so people can see that there's something wrong with your arm. Make sure that people can see that, that you've had a procedure maybe or just a, an injured arm. Make sure people can see that, um, especially in church especially at the grocery store, wherever you, else you might see people, make sure you, you, you have that on. And lastly, I would say, as far as protecting your shoulder, if you can, if you have a spouse or a girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, if you can have them stay on that side when you're in a unknown circumstance, that will help prevent someone from coming up and touching it, hugging it, slapping it on the back. So lastly, protect the shoulder, protect the shoulder, because the last thing you want is to have an injury that's going to result in having to have a redo. No one wants a redo. So to recap, ice, move, nerve block, pain medicine, move, sleep position, fiber, make sure you follow the protection of your shoulder. Anyway, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm Dr. Daniel Orkut, orthopedic surgeon. This is the Rotator Cuff Expert, and we'll talk again soon. Thanks again.